Hi there, and welcome to the QImage Ultimate Getting Started video. This video is designed to show you how to locate your photos and print for the first time, whether you've downloaded the demo or you have the registered version, and you're just starting to use QImage. So I'll point out three areas here on the screen. On the, on the left side here, we have the thumbnails. These are your pictures that you've located on your hard drive or external drive, something like that. And in the middle here, we have the live view. This is where your prints will show up on the page when you start adding prints. And on the right, we have some settings, either print settings for print sizes or printers and settings where you deal with your printer and the media type, things like that. So let's start by locating your images that you want to work with, some photos that you might want to print for the first time. What we're using here is the thumbnail browser and you can access your thumbnails of your images by going to the folders here and just locating the folder. I have my folders sorted by date. You might have them sorted by date or by event, like in a name, uh, like Christmas at the beach or something like that. Um, however you are sorting them, you can go in and find your photos. They're already there. So there's no need to import them, no need to create albums or anything like that. Just go locate your folders uh, and locate the images in that folder that you're interested in and they'll show up right here. Now if this folder browser here doesn't show up when you're trying to locate your photos, it might be closed because you can open and close it by clicking it on this bar here. It says click to open, but uh, in any case, that's what you do. You just click to open the folder browser. Once you locate the folder, you can close it to see more thumbnails if you like. That's why it's uh, the, there's the ability to open it and close it. But I'll leave it open for now, showing the folder. And now we have some photos that we might want to print. We've found our photos. But before we just go start loading photos onto the page, let's make sure our printer is set up correctly. So you may have more than one printer you may only have one but let's just make sure that we select I have a whole bunch of printers here but I'll select the one that I'm interested in so we've selected the printer now because we know what printer we want to use next we're gonna uh, select the media type so I'll drop this list down and this list is every media type supported by the printer driver so even if you're using a third-party paper like Red River or something they'll tell you what paper type to select in the driver. They'll say for our glossy paper we want you to select ultra premium photo paper glossy. So anyway you select your media type. Now we've told it what kind of paper we're printing on. Next we need to tell it what size paper and if you drop this down again these are all the supported sizes that the driver supports. So the last one is always user defined so you can click on that and specify a size here if you like manually but usually we're using sheets so we'll go with eight and a half by eleven for this example you have uh, the source sometimes it says rear manual feed something like that this is just uh, landscape orientation of the page and portrait that's also a driver setting now when we get down to profile here printer profile controls the color that you're gonna send to the printer so Again, we'll drop down and we'll do suggest printer profiles. And when you do suggest, it will bring up the included profiles that get installed with your printer and it will sort them by relevance. Usually the top one, it's either the first one or the second one, but usually the top one is the one that you want. And you notice that it's selected a profile called Epson Ultra Premium. So we'll, it's already selected, all we have to do is click open and now it's using that profile and the default here and what's typically used is relative colorimetric with black point compensation turned on so you don't really have to do anything here just click OK so now we've identified the profile that controls the color of our prints and we're ready to start adding prints and print for the first time I will show you that the reason that we didn't go into the driver, and there's really no need to go into the driver unless you're doing something like borderless, which takes some other uh, settings to do it right. Uh, so we leave that in the driver, but everything else is controlled by QImage. So when you select the printer, 
that selects the driver. When you select the media type, it selects this media type in the driver. This is all communicating with the driver. When you select the media size, that's selected in the driver. So you don't really have to open the driver. And when you select the profile, it automatically selects the proper color mode in the driver as well. So you really don't have to open the driver. I could just print right now after I set these. Uh, but I will show you, I'll open the driver. When you click properties, that's how you open the regular driver here. And you'll see that it already selected the best quality. It meaning driver AI, the driver AI system in QImage. Um, other software won't do this. You'll have to do this manually in other software. But you can see that it selected um, ultra premium because we selected that on the main window. And we selected 8.5 by 11, so that's al already here. And if you want to check, let's see the color options uh, right here. QImage set no color adjustment automatically because the driver AI system took care of that for us. So we don't really have to do any of that. The only reason we would go in here is, is maybe if we wanted to uh, click on borderless here or something. Um, but I'll go ahead and close that because the driver is already set up. If you want to see driver AI and what it can do, you can click this gear. And you can see the things that driver AI can do. Uh, it'll control color management in the driver for you. These are all things that it's doing in the driver for you, so you don't have to open the driver. It will prevent sizing conflicts by turning off scaling. It'll manage uh, some of the settings that you might not think about, some kind of hidden settings in the driver, like loss of data prevention and other weird things that you might not know what they are. It'll handle that. Um, it'll set the print driver to the highest quality for you and it'll make the live view black and white if you have black and white turned on in the driver so that your preview looks correct. But any and all of these options can be turned on or off. So if you want to take over and do everything manually like every other program does, you can uncheck all these. So it's your choice. Um, but anyway, so what we've done here, we've located our photos, we've set everything up top down printer, media type, size, profile. We've got everything ready. Now all we have to do is add some photos. So let's say I want this photo, so I just click on it. And you can use shift or control keys just like you do in Windows to, to multi-select. Um, but you can also use the checkbox here. I'll click the checkbox, I'll select this too. So now I have two thumbnails selected and now three. So these three thumbnails are selected, and if I click the 4x6 size, you hear a sound telling you that there's a new page. That's a page turning sound. Um, and you can get, it automatically uh, puts the three 4x6 prints on one page. Um, if you want to change the size of a print, like this one down here, I could click on this. And it's as simple as clicking on the object you want to change and then clicking on a size. So now I made this 2 by 3. And now it's still selected. If I want to go back to 4 by 6, I just click 4 by 6. And it automatically arranges everything, optimizes the paper. Um, I could click here and then shift click. That selects all of them and make them all 2 by 3. Or put them all back to 4 by 6. So it's as simple as click an object, click what you want to do with it. So a little side note here, if you notice, I just clicked on some prints. Let's say I just clicked on this one print. So now I have one print selected, as it says down here. This little indicator over here on the right tells you what will happen when you click on a size. So if I click on a new size, it's telling me that's delta, that's the international symbol for change. So that means I'm going to change the size of a print. That's what happens. It's just a little indicator telling you that if I click 2 by 3, I'm going to change this print size. If I click 4 by 6, I'm going to change this print size. Notice if I click back over on the thumbnail side, which I can do by just clicking up here, now these three thumbnails are still selected. Now it says plus, because if I, if I click a size here now, I'm going to be adding prints at that size. That's what the plus means. So click two by three and I'll get, you heard the page turn sound. That means I got another page. It's page two in here now. I have one, two, three. This is page two. Wallets. And if I get rid of these, I can just click the X to get rid of them. 
You'll hear the sound of the page crumpling when I get rid of this one because page two will be gone and I'll be down to one page. So there's the sound of the page crinkling, meaning I just deleted a page. And that's how it works. Th those are the basics. Um, you just touch what you want and then touch the size. So now I've touched a thumbnail. So if I click an 8 by 10, it's going to add, as you can see here. It's in add mode. If I click 8 by 10, it's going to give me an 8 by 10. If I click the print on the live view, now I'm in change mode. So now I clicked the print, and if I click 5 by 7, it's going to change that size to a 5 by 7 and resort the prints accordingly. See, now we have another page here with other prints on it because this is a 5 by 7. So that's how the controls work. Click an object, click what you want to do with it. And there are other options in here too that I won't go over um, because I'm trying to keep this short for simple getting started. But I do want to point out a couple important ones. When I've been adding these, I've had crop, this button right here, turned off. It says auto cropping is off. So this was a five by seven. Notice what it says in this area down below. The pop-up says seven by 4.68. You might say, why didn't I get a five by seven? That's because I had crop turned off to make a point and show you how this works. With this print selected, again, touch the print, click on it to select it, and now click what you want to do with it. I'm going to turn cropping on now. So when I click this button, now auto cropping is on for this selected print, and you can see that it says 7 by 5.0, exactly what I ordered. Now this was a 4 by 6 print. It says 4 by 5.99 because the aspect ratio of the image wasn't quite 3 to 2. Uh, but notice that the crop is on for this print. If I click on this one, crop is off. So if I select all prints, I'm going to hit Control A on the keyboard and watch what happens. It selects Control A is the standard for select all. So now I've selected all prints and I'm going to turn crop on for all prints. Now every print is going to be exactly the size I ordered. 2 by 3 for that example, 4 by 6, 5 by 7. So that's how the cropping works. If you ever notice that uh, some of your prints aren't exactly the size you ordered, it's because this crop button is off. And what it does will, if the crop button is off, like for this 5 by 7, if I turn it off again, it's going to print the biggest print that it can within a 5 by 7 frame without cropping. Because sometimes it's important you don't want anything cropped. So now you got a 7 by 4.68. And I can sit here and click this button over and over. It's on now, it's off, it's on. So it's just whatever is selected, that's what you're doing to it. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is, look at this size up here. This size is important. We have, as you can see, 8.5 by 11 selected for the media size. But this size above the preview page on the live view says 8.266 by 10.766. This is the printable area. This is the largest size print that you can get on a page. So if I select a new print and I say add at fit to page size, we get a new page and notice the size is 8.27 by 10.77, which is this size rounded. So I'm getting the largest possible size and notice it's not 8.5 by 11. You can't get 8.5 by 11 size unless you go into the driver and activate that borderless feature and then you can get the full size. And another good example of that is, this comes up on roll paper too, this, this same topic. People trying to get three 8 by 10s across a 24 inch roll and unless you have borderless, you're not going to be able to fit it because it'll be the same thing. It'll be 23 and a half inches or something. Uh, so it's not quite enough to fit three times eight across there. Um, but in this case, we have 8.266 by 10.766. And if we go into the driver, we can select borderless. But let me do something else too. I'll show you this. You can select, you don't have to select everything on the QMG main screen. It's just there so you don't have to open the driver. But it works the other way too. In the driver, if I select 8 by 10 as my size in the driver and I click OK, 
it'll update here too. They both talk to each other. The driver talks to QImage and QImage talks to the driver. But what I wanted to point out here is now our media size is 8 by 10 and our page size is 7.766 by 9.766. So we can't get a true 8 by 10 because we have this non-printable margin and that's dictated by the driver and the printer. You can't, no program can print here. Uh, it's non-printable. So you can't get a full 8x10 on 8x10 paper unless you go into the driver and you click borderless. Click OK. And now you can get essentially an 8x10. 7.998 by 9.998. That's, you know, within two one thousandths of an inch of an 8x10. So now you can fill the whole page. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. That's about it for the getting started video. This has shown you how to locate your photos, set all the printer aspects over here, the printer, the media type, the paper size. Let's say I wanted to just print one five by seven. Now I click print here, click OK, and it'll print that um, because we've already set up all of our properties here for the printer. We're, we're sure that it's going to work right because we have the right paper and everything. And again, keep an eye on this value right here because this tells you the size that you are able to print. Um, if you want to do something like uh, take this, I'm going to select the print, which means I'm doing something with this object here. I'm selecting the print. Now whatever I do will affect this print. Now I can go into more sizes here and specify one dimension and I'm going to say this is the paper border. I'm going to put a half inch. So now I've said half inch border around this print and I have the print selected. When I click OK, it does exactly what I told it to. It put a half inch border around the print so that the print now is going to print on this piece of paper with a half inch border. So there are other options that you can get to here. And again, with this print selected, I can do more go back here and do 0.25 and you'll see that it shrinks the border now I have a 0.25 inch border so there's a whole lot more that QImage can do you can add borders when you print it saves your job in a job log automatically you can go back and recall it and see exactly what you printed print another copy of it uh, do other things but this video is just to show you how to get started and print your first prints so I hope this video was clear and concise on how to do that and it'll get you up to speed quickly. Thanks for watching.